Hello, it's Paul Hurst here uh, at Sorted Gadget on Twitter for Gadget Geek and from Paul's iPhone here on YouTube. And here today with just a bit of an explanation as to this, which is uh, an Enigma simulator on iPad. I've recently visit, visited Bletchley Park near London, um, which was the home of the World War II code breakers. And they were tasked with decrypting some codes that came from machines such as Enigma during World War II. Um, and I've done some photographs for Flickr and I was trying to explain um, in one of the write-ups just how Enigma worked and found it a bit tricky. So I thought I'd do this video uh, just as an explanation, an introduction to code breaking and Enigma. Um, this is an exact replica, digital replica, of an Enigma machine. I know this to be true because at my last visit at Bletchley I actually took this along and asked the guys whether it would work and whether they could successfully decrypt messages that, that I might send on here. And by a process of elimination, and by checking a couple of different books and pressing a few different buttons, they did confirm that this is a 100% accurate variation of Enigma. Uh, it works. So, um, by marrying together 1940s technology with the iPad, uh, the 1940s tech is able to um, decrypt any messages sent on the iPad. Um, which is a bit geeky and also a bit brilliant at the same time. So thanks to the guys at Bletchley for, for helping to, to prove that it can be done. So what Enigma was, is it's a machine that uses um, a keyboard and a lamp board here. And every time I press a key, a lamp lights up. It made an electric circuit, there was a battery inside. So I typed in H and the letter K, E, L... L. That's interesting, isn't it, that pressing L doesn't bring up the same letter twice. More on that in a minute. U, W, O, R, L, D. Hello world! And that's the code. So what would happen is the Morse code people would transmit the top line and then P, R, I'm just going to write this down, K, I, D, K, N. Yes. Now, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to gobbledygook and mess up the plain text? Well, the answer is the quickest method of communication during the war was to use Morse code. But the problem is, is when you sent Morse code via wireless, it wasn't on a closed circuit. It was on an open, it was broadcast openly. Anybody who listened into the wireless signals could hear what you were saying and therefore work out what, what you were doing. So the Enigma machine was invented in the 1920s as a commercial way of encrypting sensitive data that could be sent via Morse code so that people at the listening stations, such as Station X at Bletchley, which is um, station number 10, um, so they wouldn't, it wouldn't make any sense. It wouldn't say hello world. It would say uh, So that's why uh, Enigma was invented. But what happened is soon after the Germans started using it for military purposes and um, well it's a whole different story after that. So what happened is um, and this is where it gets a bit clever and a bit geeky as well at the same time. We had Enigma machines in this country. We knew the Germans were using them. But what we didn't know is how they were setting the machines up. Because what the Germans did every single day is they had a book, a code book. And inside the code book would be different settings for that day. So they'd set up the machine differently. And this is how they'd do it. At the front of each Enigma machine was what's called a stecker board and it allowed you to patch different letters through to different letters. So all of a sudden that makes it more complicated because an E becomes an F, a U becomes an X. So it makes it a bit more complicated. But what you could also do is you could move these dials at the top 
These started on A, 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 but now it says A, A, K. And the reason why that one says K is because every time I pressed a letter to type in Hello World, that advanced by one. And every time it advanced by one, the electric circuit went through a different part of the wheel and a different lamp went up here. And that's why even when I pressed L twice on Hello World, and L appears here, L, 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 there's three L's, two O's but you can see that's not reflected in the code it's no giveaway it's not simple um, so what we could do if we were setting up our Enigma machine there's nothing stopping us moving dial 2 to where dial 1 is there's nothing stopping us moving dial 3 to where dial 2 was and there's nothing stopping us starting on position 18 here position 10 there position 16 there. Nothing stopping us at all. And as long as the person at the other end with their Enigma machine puts exactly the same settings in, they'll get exactly the same out. So typing that would give you Hello World. It would work. It would work backwards as well as forwards. So Enigma not only encoded, but it decoded as well. And that's what made it so appealing to the Germans. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you where the problem is with Enigma. Right, and the problem is, I delete these, obviously it's all set up completely differently now, but it doesn't matter. Because what I'm going to do is, when we press a letter, you can see that as I type the same letter each time, different letters appear. And as you can see, the wheel at the top goes round each time. And when it gets to A again, the next wheel goes on one. So now you can see it says A, B, C. And if you look at the code, you can actually see that of all the letters that are there, if I pressed it enough times, you'd see this certainly, there'd be one missing. That's right, the letter that would be missing would be L. Because L can never encode itself as L. It's always going to be a different letter. And that is Enigma's weakness. That was the starting point, if you like, for the code breakers. The code breakers knew that the letter L, in this case, was never going to be normally printed in the message. So, for example, if I say this was, let's say it wasn't Hello World, it was Hail Hitler. Then, as I'm looking for Hail Hitler in the text of a message, because some of these messages could be like 6,000 characters long, I might presume that the words Hail Hitler had been there, or I might presume there might be some message, some word in there, and I'd guess at what that word would be. And then to de start the decryption process, when I'm doing it by hand, I've not got Enigma, I don't know the settings. How did these guys decrypt it? Well, what they did is they said, let's say that says Hail Hitler. We know that the letters never match. So in the big long, if you wrote all the letters out, then there's only certain places in that message where Hail Hitler could appear. Because in the other places, one of the letters would be in the same place, if you know what I mean. So H and would equal H. So in Hail Hitler, if you imagine two lines, and one line is the message, and one line is the code, you know that if you saw a H in the message, and in the code at the same point was a H, you know that that couldn't be Hail Hitler at that point in the code, if that makes sense. It couldn't be, because we've already seen that H can't come out as H. And this was called a crib. Working out that was called a crib. Once they'd done that, they were able to take the message and either using a mathematical formula, which some very clever people invented, people like Alan Turing, you could either do that or you could use this, which was called a BOM, B-O-M-B-E machine. And what the BOM machine did is it worked out the settings that it couldn't be. So on that principle, this machine mechanically by using lots of switches and things and dials and rotors, it worked out where it couldn't be. 
And once it found somewhere where it could be, the machine stopped. And when the machine stopped on one of these wheels, it would have a letter. And you could go back to the Enigma machine, put it in, type in your code word, and if German came out the other end, you've cracked it. And that is a really basic introduction into how it all worked over at Bletchley Park and at Station X. These guys were the first person to do it. And this bomb machine became, inadvertently, one of the first computational devices that had ever been invented. One of the first computers. And it was invented at Bletchley Park by Alan Turin and his team to crack Enigma. So I hope that helps. I hope it's been a relatively pain-free introduction to the world of Enigma. And I can't recommend enough uh, a trip to Bletchley Park. It's fantastic. Get yourself along and uh, enjoy. If you've got any questions, do feel free to ask. It's at Sorted Gadget on Twitter, the Gadget Geek, and from Paul's iPhone here on YouTube. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you soon.